I think the upshot of your being in the Mojave is that next two streams uh, will be next next week, which means that, that we're taking next week off. Is that an upshot? It's kind of a side shot. What is what does the word upshot mean to you? I, I've been uh, I've been in numerous meetings today where I've been called out on my usage of, of spe specific words, and I never <laughs> really have the confidence to say no. That's what it means. Uh, I thought the upshot was like the positive outcome of a okay. potentially negative situation. I see. So it is a positive. It has a connotation of being positive. I I thought that the upshot was simply the result or outcome. I mean, um, the dictionary says that I'm charlatan and totally incorrect so. well well i mean, see that second example is clearly a positive right you don't That's, want your goal this to is have more cyanide. of how i would say it <laughs> i i want my gold to be cyanide free because when i swim in it i don't want to asphyxiate oh i yeah. want to asphyxiate because the gold is actually in my 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 breathing apparatus so you're on a 15 inch mac right now right 15 inch quad core. I feel like I've got, I got the bits for this. You've got twice as twice as much computer as I do when I'm de when I'm developing. Can't explain it. You know what? I, I like, think before I buy yeah. a new computer, I might try just developing in Windows and see if I can bite that bullet. I was gonna say <clears throat> it might. It seems like it's worth it. There are so many tiny things in Windows that is different right down to like how the mouse pointer tracks to the to my mouse motions that I feel like it's going to give me like RSI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Dude, this website is taking up an entire core. Come on. Well, it's good that we're we're focusing on optimization stuff right now. Yeah. Clearly we have neglected that for too long. We skipped it. Yeah. We skipped leg day. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Firefox do its jam. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I trust any browser more than any other at this point. They're all just <laughs> messes of JavaScript. Um if we're gonna be doing local development today, maybe we can forego the whole network shenanigans. Oh. Can and we? um That would be cool. At the very least, we could just set the num max number of players to one. Did you already just do that? What's I that? already did that. Yeah, okay. I've been. Great. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how to run in our current reality. I'm not sure how we can run the server in the browser. Theoretically, it would be possible, but. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I think we still need the at least two loops here, so that, that's fine. OK. As long as you're okay with that. I mean, if it gets slow, I actually don't think it would be a bad thing to have a single player mode where the server does run in the browser. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, this is this is much more manageable now. So yeah. Okay. I, I can work with that. Sounds good. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So first of all, logistics. Dom, mm -hmm. the you were thwarted by wildfires last time, not to be put down. Yeah, I'm I'm heading back out into the into the desert this week. So, fing fingers crossed. There's still fires. Everything is still burning. Uh, but I'm determined to make it. This is the Mojave you're going to? Somewhere around there, yeah. Death Valley. Like very very nearby, but like honestly, the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I like so. it. And are you are you camping or are you going to be like? No, we actually got like a little cabin, and I think there's even Wi-Fi. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm not like leaving civilization, but I also am. Yeah, yeah. I won't have a sweet fiber connection to run uh, the stream on. So. Go get go eat Mexican food out there. I bet it's really good. I mean, I'm like. Uh, I feel like the closest grocery is going to be like two hours away. I don't know what I'm going to do, man. It's going to be really weird. It's going to be a okay. weird experience. Dang. I was thinking that, you know, rural California, you could go to some, like, weird country bar and, like, drink Bud Light. You know? There is, like, I think there is a bar and maybe a restaurant near the cabins, and they're both open and letting people go inside, and I'm just like, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I guess... I guess inner California is kind of a red state, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, like, this is, like, West Nevada, East California. Like, it's... It's bread. Yeah. It's going. It's going to be Trump country. I think. Oh, I found. I found the Facebook page of the place I'm going, at, and it's like extremely, extremely pro Trump. So I'm yeah. going to try not to talk to that. Talk to them about that because they know where I'm sleeping. 
You know, I've spent a little bit of time on the website LinkedIn, a Microsoft subsidiary recently, because, uh, you know, I, I actually posted a message about this very stream on LinkedIn. I actually saw that, and I saw that our former coworker Zarya liked it, and it really warmed my heart. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, Zarya left the Bay Area in, 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 in very quickly, uh, and, I, and I felt like we didn't can't, get a chance to, to say goodbye to her. I can't blame her, though. It, yeah. was, a, it was a good choice, all yeah. things considered. Yeah, she's in Seattle now, which has got to be fantastic. Um, at any rate, uh, I've spent some time on LinkedIn, and, and that naturally gave me a chance to kind of like low-key stalk people that I know in the industry. <laughs> and there's a good friend of mine, um, a really good friend of mine from high school. I don't keep in touch with him at all anymore, but he's just like a very successful person in the technology industry. And it started to dawn on me, like, the kinds of things that he was liking. I was like, oh, my God. He is a Trump supporter. I was like, oh, no. And I was like, well, I guess that goes to show. Like, oh, you're... it's. I don't know what it's correlated to. It's not definitely not correlated to your job or your industry or how smart or how educated you are. It's, it's, kind, well, of, I mean, it's kind of wild. You, you saw the <clears> thing at Coinbase, right, where they are taking a no politics stance? Yeah. What does that mean? Does that mean that they are inherently, I mean, they're pro status quo if you say no politics, but exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was like, they're very, they're afraid of like whatever employee activism happened at Google and Facebook where employees were like, fuck this shit. You're actually burning the world down around us. Please don't. Yeah. And their response to that was like to try to get out ahead of it by saying, what if we banned all political opinions in the workplace? <laughs> And I'm sure this will go very well for them. Oh man, <laughs> political opinions. As if there's like a there's like a definition of what's political and not political. That's that everybody agrees on. Certainly not trying to create a new monetary system to disrupt existing economies and make money more accessible is like an apolitical stance, of course. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I can't believe we, were, we used I don't, to work. I don't in, miss crypto. I can't believe we used to work in blockchain. <laughs> Strange, uh, strange yeah. methods. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. And I really liked everybody we worked with. I know we we had a really good blockchain company, but it was still the blockchain. Yeah. Yeah. Don't miss it. Not in the in the end. I'm sort of not surprised that the blockchain that we worked on did not take off because it's weird. Yeah. Everything is weird. So I think the upshot of your being in the Mojave is that next two streams. Uh, will be next next week rather than yep. next week, which means that, that we're taking next week off. Is that an upshot? It's kind of a side shot. What is what does the word upshot mean to you? I, I've been uh, I've been in numerous meetings today where I've been called out on my usage of, of specific, specific words, and I never <laughs> really have the confidence to say no. That's what it means. Uh, I thought the upshot was like the positive outcome of a okay. potentially negative situation. I see. So it is a positive. It has a connotation of being positive. I, I thought that the upshot was simply the result or out. I mean, um, the dictionary says that I'm a charlatan and totally incorrect. So. Well, I don't know. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> well, I see that second example is clearly a positive. Right? You don't That's, want your gold. This to is have more cyanide. of how I would say it. <laughs> I, I want my gold to be cyanide free because when I swim in it, I don't want to asphyxiate. Oh, I yeah. want to asphyxiate because the gold is actually in my 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 breathing apparatus, rather than <laughs> the cyanide being in my. Hmm. Today, today I learned. Uh, I think I think you can call me out on the strange usage of words and phrases. Then, the other word I used today in a meeting was metrical, having to do with metrics. Met. And this is the second time in a row I've been called out on whether or not it's an actual word. Huh. Uh, and uh, I, I did use it, I did like invoke it in usage number two right there. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, people were skeptical. Um, usage number one would be strange at work, but maybe not Slack. Yeah, I don't know. Well, apparently at Slack, they didn't, they did, they did not appreciate my, my usage of the word. And I didn't even do it. It wasn't like, I've got this zinger, this $5 word in my back pocket. I'm going to bust out with it. It was just the thing that had come to mind. And then uh, 
I'm glad. It, it's it's the nature it's a of good my word. new team. That, yeah, they're they're willing to to kind of hold my feet to the fire a little bit. <laughs> but they were wrong ultimately. <laughs> that is true. Ultimately, they were wrong. But then, yeah. I, the I, I, think, I think the upshot is that I think we were all losers. Actually, they were wrong, <laughs> and I was shown to be a pompous asshole. I <laughs> think that's what it was. <laughs> Um, okay, no streams next week. Uh, see everybody next next Monday. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna talk quad trees today. Today is quad tree day. All right. Uh, yeah. So we we sort of left off with most of what was in. We did node insert. Can you um, bump up your font size? Yeah. Bump it up. Oh, that's that's what I. Yeah, much better. And I don't even need this sidebar. It's not doing nothing. B, baby. What's Command K? Or is it just Command B for you? Just Command B. That's funny. Oh, that's weird. Command K. Command I, well, D. I have, I have, I brought in my Sublime hotkeys. I don't know if you did the same, but uh... no. But down here, it's it's saying waiting for the second key of the chord, which I yeah wasn't have never used before. I think my Sublime hotkeys have ruined my life in VS Code. Because I can't clear quite, the terminal. Quite possibly. Yeah. <laughs> Never be the same. Damn. But I still use Sublime from time to time, so I, I really don't want to change anything. I'm very much into like everything working the same way everywhere, even though they're not the same thing. Understandable. Uh, we use we use Ruby Mine at work. Wow. Um, I know. Nice. Uh, but there's a there's a burgeoning VS Code rebellion. Interesting. Yes. As as happens, but actually, someone made a set of Ruby mine to VS Code binding so people could switch uh, editors with ease. So when you say you use Ruby mine at work, is it mandated, or is it just like there's a lot of tooling that's like written in Ruby mine that it kind of it's it's definitely not mandated, and it kind of was just like here are the setup instructions for Ruby mine when I like joined, ah. and then me and the other engineer who joined at the same time both set up VS Code together, and we were just like. No, nah, we're going to VS Code. Oh, so you're the burgeoning VS Code rebellion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We the, There was a, right after I joined, there was like a VS Code Slack channel that started for us to figure out, like, it was like plotting and also how to get the Ruby miners to I mean, to if you're going to do JavaScript, VS Code is the thing to do. Right? It's like a, it's weird. It's the, this, it's like a 50% Rails, 50% React shop. So it's like right, right down the line. Yeah. But I, I am the VS Code Rebellion. If we were pairing in person more, I'd probably have to work harder at it. But no one yeah. can stop me at home. Um, I, I feel like people can't mandate editors because there's always going to be that like savage Tmux Vim minority. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Who will have oh, yeah. their way no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's always a Vim person. I'm one to talk. I mean, I, like I, back when you and I worked together, I was like writing my Java and Sublime, compiling everything using Java C in the. <laughs> no, it's what I always do too. Though I hate Eclipse. <laughs> yeah, well, IntelliJ, right? That's RubyMine is a, a JetBrains product, is it not? It is. Yeah, it just never it never feels right to me. No. Okay. Uh, Does it not have like really bitch and code intelligence in it? It. That's the best part. It's amazing. Yeah. Like. It's and it's really good at Ruby code intelligence too, which is like the hardest bullshit problem in the world. It, it is. Seems like the hardest problem in computer science is how do you make code intelligence on Ruby? Yeah, and, and they do quite a passable job. So like, I like it. Um, That's but it turns out I, I don't need it that much. I just write TypeScript. Yeah. They're really good programmers over there at JetBrains. You know the language Kotlin? They just made. Yeah. It. They're just. That's like, theirs, right? Yeah. yeah. It's chill. I'll just make a language. Yeah. Well, and like I, I do have to use Android Studio on the regular, and that is yet another Eclipse, JetBrains, Kotlin sort of joint. Oh, really? I, is Android Studio is that IntelliJ based or Eclipse based? Uh, Eclipse based. Ugh. I know. <laughs> uh, or like it was at some point. It really feels like Eclipse. Yeah, it's got the kind of. It, it probably doesn't even have like IDPI fonts, right? Yeah. Oh, IntelliJ actually. Oh, okay. It's got the dark mode there. Mm hmm. Cool. I thought it was Eclipse. That's great. Yeah. I guess I haven't used Eclipse in a long, long time, but yeah. I remember it looking like this. Maybe it's, if it's not high DPI now, I might tear my eyes out. So. Yeah. You know what it is about Eclipse and IntelliJ? It's their funny icons for folders and files. 
they all Dude, look right it's like this weird like turn of the century uh kind of like brightly colored like yeah it, it's weird their their whole icon sensibilities like of that particular era yeah and like I, I, there's just there's so much going on there's there's a lot going on on the screen yeah like a lot of buttons to press a lot of buttons to press xcode's not much better but like something about this always always feels like much too much to me yeah i do like that there's a gecko Where's or is that gecko? an iguana where uh, what are you saying? Just in the, the screenshot of Android Studio. Oh, that guy. Yeah. That's a good iguana. Okay. My, does it zoom in my screen when I do that, by the way? I'm not seeing it zoom. Ah, I'm, zoom, I'm zooming my screen in. Fair enough. All right. I pretended. I, pretend, I pretended like you were zooming. So I was like, whoa, in my mind. I just didn't say it out loud because it was in my <laughs> mind. Are we ready to do quadris? Are Very convincing, yeah. yeah okay. I think so, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you you basically went and wrote the node query, which was the other half of the quad tree. Yeah, it's kind of like the inverse of the node insert, so it actually wasn't too bad. Cool. Right. Do you want to do you want to maybe like talk us through sort of what went in? Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about node insert just just to recap for ourselves because my brain sure. is not <laughs> and will never be warmed up. Okay, so uh, insert takes as its argument uh, the node that you're putting inserting into. Uh, the mm -hmm. dimensions that the node represents. And we made the architectural choice to not bake those dimensions into the node itself mm -hmm. because it's always going to be half of its parent, right, on, on either dimension. And so really, probably when you do this, you're always like, you're never going to start in the middle of the tree hierarchy. You're always going to start at the root. Mm -hmm. and so if you just know the dimensions at the root, you can always just divide by two as you go. Exactly. Yeah. Similarly, uh, the max items is a constant across all the entire tree, so we didn't bake it into the. Um, <laughs> we kind of reinvented what is known as the pimple paradigm in C++, which is private implementation. So our mm. public quadtree.ts, everything in that file is exported, but then it uses some non-exported private implementation function. And it's, in our case, it kind of makes sense because that's what's handling our recursion for. I like this. Yeah, I, I think this came out really clean. It's, I have no questions looking at the quad tree about what it does, and I think this makes it really easy to test these functions too. So Cool. So you can try to insert an item into this node, and mm -hmm. then what will happen first is we check to see if that item's position actually belongs in the access line bound, bounding box. Um, there's something a little bit silly about this code in the sense that you're passing the item in and the AABB, and so technically the caller should know better here, but uh, it turns <laughs> out that it makes this a lot easier to write if we write this right here. Yep. Okay, so what do we do at this point? Um, we actually have two different types of nodes. We have nodes that have child nodes, and then we have nodes that have actual items. Uh, so in, in, in some sense, you could say that like the leaves of the quad tree contain items, and everything else is intermediate not contain items. Mm -hmm. um, so when we insert here, if this is a node that has intermediate stuff, uh, we can rely on recursion. It's really nice. We just basically say, I'm going to try to insert this thing in every single one of children. Um, because these are, because the uh, children's own access line bounding boxes technically are mutually exclusive, right? They cover exclusive areas. And the item is a, the item is a single point Really, only one of these inserts should succeed. Um, however, I actually kind of like the idea that we wrote it this way because it, we could move to an architecture, cited, make the items be areas or regions themselves rather than mm. points. Mm -hmm. And in, if that was the case, the same item could potentially exist in multiple of these children. Totally, yeah. Um, right, so... We attempt to insert, because these are point items, only one of these is actually going to succeed, and we just recurse, right? It just keeps going down into until it basically gets out until, of this if statement, right? Right, until we hit a node that is not currently a holder of other nodes. Exactly. Okay, so let's say we do that. When we get to one of these leaf nodes, um, and it's got some items into it, um, we pass in a maximum value, which basically says, like, you don't need to further subdivide this node into... You don't need to transform this node into one that has children if 
um, that node is not at capacity, and the capacity is passed in. Right, and that's what 131 to 134 say. If, we ha if we're not at capacity, just st stick it in on the end, uh, and we're good. However, if we are at capacity, we'll get down to one line, line 137, and now we'll start to transform this node in um, one that has uh, chi uh, children, so it'll become an intermediate <laughs> node. So we basically transform it. That's what like 138 is doing. And what we do is we take all the items that we've got and we insert them. I just realized something. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do line 40, 143 if we put line 132 uh, outside of the if statement. Hmm. Like here? Uh, yeah, and then we could say if items.length is less than or equal to max items. No, oh. not, not, not less than or equal to. Uh, if, 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 if it's less than... No, uh, that makes sense. If it's less than max items, if it's... Oh, yes, if it's less than or equal to, yes. Right, because if it's if we are at three and we went to four and that was the max, we've inserted, we're good. Yeah, you're picking up what I'm putting down here. Yeah, and then uh, if you if you hit five, we're over this, and actually what we do is split and node insert the five items. Yeah, exactly. that makes total sense. Okay, cool. So we just simplified the code a little bit. I'm pleased. Um, yeah, so we basically have to fragment this current node into four quadrants. And we can. Mm -hmm. So node query looks very, very similar to that. Mm. Um, so we have the node, we have its axis line bounding box, which I had to prefix with a node axis line bounding box, because we're actually passing in a second axis line bounding box, which is the region that we are querying, right? So mm. a query against the quad tree is basically, I'm passing in a rectangle, and I want you to tell me all the things inside this tree that fit inside that rectangle. Now, for a quad tree, is, is the expectation that, like, I guess I'm curious about this line because I feel like we could also just return when you hit items, we could just be like, here's your check set. Like, go look at these. Like, is this extra unnecessary computation? And it might depend on the size of max items, to be honest. Um, the reason why I think that computation is necessary is we could get down, let's say your quad tree hasn't subdivided yet. So you have one node in the tree, mm -hmm. that's the root, mm -hmm. and it has a couple of items in it. But one item is the very top of that that area, and one item is at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. And then you query just a small piece at the top that surrounds that first item. You probably totally. want the query to just return that first item, right? Probably, yeah. I guess I, I was thinking that the quad tree lets us make sort of constant time assumptions about like our shooter system in, in a very helpful way, where it's like we'll always check like four. At most four items that were in this box or eight or whatever it is. Got it. Um, yeah. But but this makes I, I guess I'm wondering like does this end up being expensive in a way that no that's really cheap it doesn't matter. Um no I, I think it's pretty cheap uh, it's along the lines of what you remember node insert uh, I think we call yep. the same function. Oh we do yeah. yeah. Now then again inserts happen much less frequently than than queries probably <laughs> right. Um so. But the thing is, still, we're going to call this at most items number of times, depending on, like, items. Yep. Hopefully it should. Totally. Be. Yeah, it's just a few comparisons. I think it's okay. I think so, too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the harder problem is if you're you're not a leaf node in the quad tree, and you need to actually look at the children. Um, however, I think all you really need to do is just iterate over all of the children and pass the same axis line, axis line bounding box going down, or the query, mm -hmm. that is. Uh, and because the region can span multiple children, right? Think about uh, a quad tree that's just four quadrants, um, but then we query a region that goes around the middle, kind of like four corners piece of it. That means we actually may have items in each one of those quadrants that are inside the region that we're um, Which is why we're merging by basically pushing onto the end. And that's pretty much it. This is great. Yeah. All right. Cool. So we have to actually um, use this thing now. Now that I was we've gonna say, it. yeah, and 
let's see. We, we've got a lot going on here, uh, but I'm kind of feeling like wall collider because is does our this system like loops through yep. every entity? It, it goes through every wall, so this is this is too much. I agree. So um, that means I think what you're saying is that there's going to be a access line. There's going to be a quad tree that contains all of our walls. Mm -hmm. Now, is it should we do all walls or all entities? It can't be all entities because it's probably not bullets, right? And it's probably not the player. Yeah, and 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 also we probably don't want things that move. Right, because if they were, if it, if things that we want had things that move, we'd have to get into the business of removing stuff from the quad tree and putting it back in. Yeah, which is so, not not something we should necessarily avoid, but we should ask the question of whether we want to get that complex. Absolutely. Um, so I guess it's it's probably like walls, turrets, trees. So maybe yeah, maybe actually we need to first. Uh, let's see where. Is possibly an entity manager thing where when we register yeah. an entity, we decide, like, does this go in the quad tree for the entity manager? Yeah, or the system can become an object and it could have its own quad tree for the things that it cares about. Right. The system, oh. Mm -hmm. Right, because the wall collider system right now is just a function, but it could be an object. It could be. Mm. And I sort of like that idea where the damager system has its quad tree of damageables and the wall collider has its quad tree of wall colliders. Mm -hmm. The only issue with that is that if you have to move stuff around, you have to remember which quad trees to update. Yeah, and yeah, right. Placing a wall yeah. in the builder and system means you have to do something Yeah, in the, in the wall collider system. Okay. Let me ask you a question that I was thinking about earlier today, which is... Um, should we worry about if walls get destroyed? I was thinking no. I was thinking we should store entity IDs. Yep. And uh, yeah. I agree. If we cool. think that entity IDs are basically unique throughout the entire lifetime of the game, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter if there's residue of destroyed entities in the quad tree. The quad tree is still going to make it efficient for us to look up. And then, yeah. yeah, you'll get the ID out, and then you'll look, at, look that ID up in the entity manager, which just won't be there. And you're like, okay, that's just something that wasn't there before. Or that used to be there, but isn't doesn't exist anymore, right? Now, uh, a question I have is: if I place a wall, destroy it, place a wall on the same point, what does node insert do? You can have multiple items on the same point, but mm -hmm. I see what you mean. What if you can't? Uh, I guess the question is: what if you can't further subdivide, right? Or what right, if like, you, yeah. Yeah, because because right, it could keep subdividing. But I was actually thinking that we need a min subdivision size. Like, I feel like our min quadri size should be like four tiles. Yeah, subdividing so, subdividing doesn't make sense. But like, actually, you could exceed the max items in that if you keep placing a wall and destroying it, and that's fine. Uh, but it's yeah. weird. It's I, I agree with you that it's weird. Um... But I also agree with you that we should have. I think those are, these are maybe orthogonal concerns. Well, they're related. I, I, I they're see related, they're yeah. Relation. Yeah. Um, but we don't have this problem yet, though. So certainly, we should have a. I think what you're saying is that over time, if we don't deal with the fact that entities can be destroyed, it is possible to have edge cases where you create an object over and over and over again on the same file, and then have to you approach kind of linear search time because <laughs> the quad tree doesn't give us anything. Yep, exactly. Okay. Actually, I'm not. I'm not even going to run the server right now. Yeah. Who needs it? Slow my computer down. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's. I mean, that's an interesting question. It doesn't. I think we can still actually like build a pretty good guess at this right now. So if we were to make one quad tree per system. Per system that cares about space. Per right? system that cares about space. Right. Somehow, like. We need a init for the wall collider, right? Because we want some setup to happen before. Hmm. Yeah, it's tricky. Because essentially, I think what we're saying is when we create a. Yeah, we'll need an init for the wall collider. We will also need. Um, whenever we create a wall 
entity and register it, the mm -hmm. entity manager has to be smart enough to register its wall component with the wall collider system as well. Which is okay. We have all the we have all the necessary code to do that. Hmm. Reg hmm. register is where it gets a little funky to me. Like how Yeah, I guess the the entity manager doesn't know about systems, right? That's doesn't know about systems and yeah, it would it would need to and it wouldn't be a knit anymore for the wall collider. It would have to like know to go add to the wall collider tree. So this would need to keep a list of like existing trees somehow. What if we started with a single a single tree that was just the three the three item types we wanted to work with? Uh, yeah, we could do that. But we have to. But the the, the issue with that is we're assuming that the hit boxes for all of those is are the same, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And in fact, let's actually talk about the hit box issue, right? Because like I think that's pretty safe. Oh, right. Right. Because right, we're actually when we insert, what is what is an item T? What is a T? Nothing. Uh, T item has a pause, but like, what are, are we inserting in the top left corner? Are we inserting the center? Uh, and yeah, when you give an AABB, how are we choosing to, I feel like actually, maybe, maybe one of the problems is that this, this check is missing some information, right? Because we can't, we're going to have four points in the yeah. center of tiles or on the edge of tiles, but like it won't, a lot of overlaps won't actually hit that. I mean, it's not just that, it's it's also line 149. That min bias AABB overlap, it, it like de depending, like this, the logic that's currently written here, it's a, y y the query is, an, is, a, is a rectangle and the items that you're looking for are points in space. Oh, but this is, this should at least, this is for the node, so this should be okay. Uh, as long as you assume that um, things inside this node are fully enclosed by this node and don't leak, out, don't overlap into, mm. into neighboring nodes. Right? I see. <laughs> so we could, like, if we wanted to be very general about it and allow uh, allow there to be variable sized objects, mm -hmm. then. Our items need to be not positions, but they need to be things that return AABBs. Yep. Um, and then uh, our our insert needs to be able to insert these things in multiple nodes, like we mentioned mm. before. <laughs> Which I guess it's gonna do. Yeah, it can. It can kind of do it now. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty cool. Yep. The other the other thing I do wonder about is sort of a min. I don't know. Can you like? Does a quad tree get weird if you start inserting really deep? It, I mean, I guess it just it just hurts the performance if you've got a bunch of stuff that's like all stacked up on one square. But that's fine. You know what's an actually an interesting thing that we could do hmm. is we can initialize the quad tree with a function. And that function is, it basically takes an item T as its argument mm -hmm. and then return and takes a AABB as its second argument. Mm. I think I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then um, whether it's, whether it's a re, whether, whether T is a region or a point. The quad tree doesn't care. It just calls that function and says, "If if I were to query this, well, I think we would need two. Hmm. No. Uh, I I think it's basically if if we're talking about points, the comparator would check for the the inclusion of point T inside the AABB that you pass in. If it's a region thing." The comparator would basically check for overlap between item T and item T's AABB and then the AABB that. You so I think this is fine. This interface could work. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So basically, like this, we get to define. We don't have to bake our tile alignment into the quad tree. No, not at all. And we can just sort of write 
this generic font. Yeah, that seems great. I had I kind of had a shower thought like this, so I'm really glad you said it again. Um, cool. That makes sense to me. Uh, I'm gonna make this a type. I hate writing these things. Yeah, and you can put it into helpers actually, mm -hmm. so that the helpers can. Do. Oh yeah. By the way, the only reason why I put T in front of Node is that I actually think that probably item's going to go away as a result of this, I think. Um, and then I think comparator can just be without the first T. The only reason why I put okay. T in front of Node is because uh, the, 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 the symbol Node is, take, is already occupied by some stupid DOM thing. Oh, right. Yep. Document object model, not Dominic DeGretti. I died. Far be it for me to, uh, yeah. Dude, trust me. I, I've been in I've been in web development so long. <laughs> like, okay. gosh, gosh, is it? Uh, yeah, a, a strange experience. Yeah. I really liked when there was a thing called the Shadow Dom. I mean, there still is a thing called the Shadow Dom, but uh, oh yes, that's your nickname. Dom. Yep. It was for some reason we were just really talking about it for like a couple months. Maybe it was when React was getting popular. Let's see, comparator T. Cool. Nope. Too much. Okay. Uh, config dot compare. Oh. Object. Thank you. Ah, keyword arguments. So good. Yeah, that seems super reasonable. Okay. And you think we actually do we get to get away without T item now? Because that I think cool. we can get rid of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then both node insert and, and node we're going to be passing the comparator down. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to put it before the last argument. I think yep. that's yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, I like the way this is shaking it up a lot. Okay, so let's see node insert. Yeah. Um, Comparator is a comparator T. Comparator is a comparator T. With commas. Cool. And then anything still using T item? Oh, a lot of things are using T item. Okay. That interface just goes away completely. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to I was trying to do like a clever deletion and it's I don't think it's actually possible. Sweet. It's great. I love deleting code. I do. Even even when it's code we just wrote. Um, okay, sweet. So yeah, so and what did we what did we define our comparator as? It takes oh. It just basically we'd be calling the comparator and then we would not be calling dot pause on the item. Are we still calling min a b b contains? Yes, because that's the comparator that we assume by default for point comparisons, right? Is mm -hmm. min a b b contains. Now we're generalizing that to whatever gets passed in. I see. Uh, I think it re it's the reverse oh, argument. Yeah. Oh, I already regret that. And then we get rid of min a b b contains because the that the whole comparator is just that. Okay, that's that's what I thought I was saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, I misunderstood. No, that's okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Ah, that's that's great. We know we're in there, and then we redo this. Oops. Nice. Well, that's easy. Yeah. OK, so this actually is fine, but this is the new one. Exactly. Comparator of query A, B, B, and I. Yeah, it's the reverse of those two. Damn it. Ooh, it's a good thing TypeScript exists, because otherwise, <laughs> this code would never work. 
Okay. Yeah, it would take us days, right? To it, it really would. Yeah. Uh, great, that's sick. Uh, and then we can update our tests, right? Our tests can oh, be updated. Yes. And I was hoping you weren't going to say that. Sorry. Nope. No. It's cor it's correct. Uh, let me let me run the test real quick. Um, do we have that going on? Yeah, it should just be compile errors. Well, and I have to write the comparator. Oh, but you're saying that I can actually pass in minute A, B, B overlap. Uh, yes, that could be your comparator. Yeah. Be. It, actually, the comparator would be min bias A, A, B, B contains. Mm -hmm. And then since our items, like we could simplify our tests and make our items just vec2s. Uh, that's a mm -hmm. little bit of extra typing, but it would... And then our comparator would be. Can you actually see this? The signature of min a, min min a, a b min bias a b b contains. So this would actually be a valid comparator if we switch the ordering of what the comparator takes in as its. Oh well, we should just do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think that's very reasonable. Um. It would be, oh, if our type was vec2. Gotcha. Yep. Exactly. OK, everything should be unhappy. Actually, not that much. We only called it twice. Cool. We don't define it. Oh, yeah, this is great. Yeah. Great. And then test item, I think now just needs to be gone. Mm -hmm. And then every time we call vec2 dot from vec2 from values uh, for the points. All right. Well, we probably don't care about the quadrant test or that or that, right? Yeah. This New just... test item. Yeah, we can just get rid of the parentheses. So this might be a case of a regex. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't. I, you know, you just want it to be vec two dot from values. Yeah, we could even just get rid of that and just make it. Um, oh yeah, that'll work too. And then we can mm -hmm. get rid of the extra the brackets. Yeah. I was gonna say we could pass the bra just pass the bracket expression because that types checks to that type checks to a vec two. Oh, does it? Oh, great. I think you're the one that told me that, right? Just the just a, a two element array will type check. Oh, great point. We don't even need this at all, do we? Yep. Will TypeScript get rid of the extra parentheses for us? Let's find out. Also, it's not happy. Um, is it because... We're not passing a comparator in yet. We're not passing a comparator. Yeah. But that's, oh, yes. That's wild. Magic. Yeah, it's immediately just super happy about it. Yeah. I love it. Node. Does this? Oh, uh, what's going on with empty node? Ah. Um. Hmm. So oh, no, this should be fine. Yeah, I'm surprised it is unhappy about this. I guess I could do. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. Node back two. But now it's like, I'm happy that it's not. Oh, what if I think I actually need to do? I hate that that type checks. Um, I I agree, but the problem is it has to be line 176, uh, yeah, because we're we... comparing it on line 188. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah, this is a weird inconsistency in the type checker. Um, Just, we'll we'll do it as we feel. That's fine. Uh, let's see. These are all vec twos. Yep. This just needs a compare. It nope. Min bias. Yeah. yeah. Fine. It's so yeah. Vec two is just a weird type. Weird type doing weird things. Super weird.
And then we need to pass, yeah. It's weird when v VS Code gets slow, right? Your like hotkeys start going all over the place. Oh man, it's it's really something, yeah. Uh, items is a vector, and what's going on down here? Oh, this needs a compare. Bias. I put these tests pass. Uh, the quad tree test might not pass because the quad tree test also needs similar. There's an uh, quad tree mm. test.ts as well. Brilliant. Contrary back to and min. I gotta copy that. Probably needs an import. I know. I was, I was, I was trying. I just wasn't having it. Hmm. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I know. Just, I can't figure it out. To be honest, I am shocked. Uh, so let's see, quad tree. Oh, oh you know what it is? Is we have to add a. Um, it's it, we have to put a comparator oh. colon. That's our issue. That'll do it. Item zero vector array. Oh, all right. That probably all passes now too. Helpers test 162. What have I missed? Ah. Empty node vec2. TypeScript. Yeah. Mm, wait a minute. Oh, let's file it and save. Cool. All right. Um, Great. So this is really nice, and now we can write just whatever tile align comparator we feel like. And that was the magic of tests, Dom. We made all these like pretty high impact change here, and like now we're just like, yeah, it works. Whatever. I didn't want to. I was I was the one <laughs> haranguing you about writing tests this last time. And this time I was like, I don't want to do it. So really, I think past Dom has saved future Dom. Uh, it's. it's all, I'm always. And they will join tests. together to become Shadow Dom. Yeah. <laughs> this is some Super Smash Brothers lore going on yeah. here. Did you play Smash on Switch? Smash Ultimate? I did. It was great. Yeah. Oh, Jeff, I, I got Hades. It's what? truly wonderful. Hades? On, Sw on Switch. You should play Hades. I downloaded it on PC. Oh, good. It's great. All right. Did, or did you enjoy it? I downloaded it a few minutes before the stream, so I enjoyed downloading it. It was a fast That's download. Great. It was a very smooth download. <laughs> 60 frames per second. Unlike our game. Uh, yeah, if you liked... If you like any roguelites, it's extremely solid. I actually don't like roguelikes, but I thought I thought as much, yeah. But uh, I've heard it's really just it feels great to play. It really does. You should put on like whatever god mode they have that like turns down the rogue good rogue good difficulty of it. Oh, I'm gonna try it without that first, and then I'll see what I'll see how it goes. Okay. Because um, I I think this is the like this has enough polish to not make it. It has like storyline and it has a bunch of build trees and stuff like that. That's that's right up my alley. It's it's slick, yeah. And there is just I'm unlocking a new thing every run, which I really love. That's like the the roguelite uh, cocaine for me. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Maybe I do like uh, roguelites and I just haven't played them. I didn't play Dead Cells. Hmm. That didn't grab me as much. It because it looked hard. It's it is. It's like a little too Dark Soulsy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So, so back to our wall collider system. Uh, back to our entity manager. Yeah. I think I think we at least know like we can put a bunch of tile aligned things in here, and if we really want to split it up later, I'm I'm down for that. But 
I want to try the sucker out too. Okay, so basically what you're saying is you want a tree of stuff that you know is tile size. Yeah, so it's tile of... size and not moving, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wall, walls, trees, and turrets. Yeah. And and mostly because we have this really clean entry point for like adding or destroying if we do delete. Um, if this is not system oriented, how does the system know whether or not everything is in the quad tree? Or... Right. How does the system know? Can you say more? Like, okay. So let's say we're doing damageables. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have a quad tree. And. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess these are all the tile. Like, there are some damageables that are not tile aligned, like the tank. How oh, does the yeah, system know that it needs to look for tank? Yeah, I think we sort of it just kind of knows. It just knows that like I need to imp I need to I need to go look in the quad tree A mm -hmm. and then I need to look in I need to iterate over the the entities and look for players. Is that kind of what you're going for? I think okay. exactly that. Yeah, it's sort of where we landed last time where it's just like we cuz we didn't want to deal with the moving object yet. So it's just like okay. Yeah. Yeah, look at look at the damage bolts on your point and check all two players. Okay. Yeah, but I agree. It, it's imperfect. New, Oof. love instantiate our new classes. All right, so we um, have. When we yeah. declare this as a property, can we put that comment walls, trees, turrets, um, just so I... we know that like, um, when we, maybe when we declare it, so like in the mm -hmm. list of class properties, which. Mm. The declaration doesn't exist. Yep, that's fair. Quad tree of I think it's gonna be IDs, yeah. Uh I think it yeah. Yeah, you're Could, right, because then we can look in the entity manager. Like the function the comparator we pass in there, like we'll just well, look very at easy the access, manager, yeah. like, like pull the transform out, pull the mm -hmm. hitbox out. Mm -hmm. Do we know that everything has the same hitbox structure? Um, or what we're going to do is we're going to pull the transform out and then we're going to just like project the area around it by a tile set. That was that kind yeah. of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If the trend, if the point for every one of these is the center, which I think it is, that's what we did, right? We have a function that I think gives us the tile coordinate of a world mm. position, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what we do is we then we call tile to world on that to scale mm -hmm. it back out by the tile size. And I think, well, to tile to world adds the half. So tile to world repositions oh. it to the center, right? Oh, is it tile box for a position? Yeah. Uh, as, long as, the, as long as we know that the position is exactly in the center of the, the boxes, which I think they should be, right? Yeah, I think, I think we rely on this in a lot of places. Probably just wall collider, right? I'm guessing. Mm. Oh, pfft. all right. Good point. <laughs> That's fine. We have it. I mean, this is where wall, coll wall collider, I remember now, was the one system where we're like, we know a priori these, these walls take up one tile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, uh, ch -ch -ch not this entity manager. Okay, so our max items. Uh, do you want to try just a, a nice, a nice round four and see how we end up? Yeah. The other thing that we forgot to do is add a minimum subdivision for the quad tree. Um, yeah. Which we should do eventually. We don't have to do it now, but in fact, we don't have yeah. to do it at all since the builder doesn't work right now. You're, we're never going to put more than one entity on the scene. Correct. Uh, the same at, tile. at the moment, it's totally impossible. Yeah. Um, but soon. Not so much. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is interesting. So A B B is the map, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, so we'll get we'll get there. Uh, and then comparator. That's all we need. Cool. I guess we can define. Mm, we might need to define this inline actually. Yep, because it needs to have a reference to this. Yeah. Exactly. 
how end comparator has a nice nice strong structure to it yeah takes an abb and then it takes an item and then we can call item entity id here right we could actually literally get call it what it's uh yeah 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 because it's our function yep cool it's not theirs it's ours <laughs> Okay, and do you need a return value? No, it's complaining because the thing above it's not defined. Let's Great. just pass in an AABB, like zero, 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 something like that. Hmm. We'll figure that out later. Indeed. Okay, now what? Uh, now that needs to return Boolean. Ah, there we go. Great. Yeah. And those are already used. Okay, cool. Um... So let's see. So we are going to say um, equals um, this dot entities entities entity ID. Yep, and it could be null. And if it's null, then mm -hmm. we return false, right? Yep. Exactly. Uh, and then we're going to get our tile box yeah. of entity. Dot. If not entity, I'm going to do. And, or yeah. not entity transform. Yeah. yeah. Unlikely, but uh, why not? Yep. Transform dot position. Mm, thank you, yeah, of course. Cool. And this should be a back to back to. Great. Mm -hmm. Oh man, tell me that tile box actually returns the top and bottom. Great, it does. And not the other kind of rectangle. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got that and we've got our comparator ABB and then are we just doing a min bias contains on uh, this? Not, I think we're not doing contains, we're doing a uh, min bias overlap, overlap, which is defined Great. in the helpers. However, I've been thinking about this. Uh, mm -hmm. We should maybe move the min bias stuff into math.ts because I th mm. think that's kind of where they. Okay. Well, we're going to have to change a lot of things in a second. So. Yeah. Uh, and then this is. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't really matter the order, actually. And we'll just print this. Exactly. All right. That's quad tree. Cool. Uh, and then let's see down here in register. We, regist we register everything by hand, don't we? We totally do. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, then we do like basically we need to say if the entity has a wall on it, add it. If the entity has a. I know it's. I'm. I'm looking at this uncommitted thing, and I'm just sad. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't matter, I guess, because we're not currently predicting anything that will get removed. Yeah, ex I, but exactly. But I want to raise a sad. I, I, I know what you mean. Like, if, if and when we do want to remove from the quad tree, the multiplayer thing is going to really be s painful. Yep. Um, though, I, you know, perhaps not, because, like, what is our set of predicted entities? It's like a single wall that a builder spat out. Yeah. So it's like, perhaps we just, perhaps we keep track of our uncommitted entities and like return that in every match somehow and then only add it to the quad tree like when they're fully committed. Like, we can get around that, I'm sure. Uh, It's just, it's a tiny set of like extra search space versus like all the entities. I I think it's okay to add stuff in there if and if they're not okay because uh, like all all the index does is reduce the search space it's all it is is like an initial filter and it's Remember never that it's never going to be wrong right we're gonna we're gonna run this multiple times though for like it's it un uncommitted gets backed out of the entity manager but it won't get backed out of the quad tree oh I see so we're gonna add the same entity multiple if when when we have builders yeah right now we won't because nothing else will trigger this but 
in in the future uh i see what you're saying yeah so uh i, I see what you're saying so we basically need to make sure that we don't double register correct yeah um what is our what is our tree here? <clears throat> oh it has a type that's nice do other enemies have a type uh oh they totally do oh god i keep getting the wrong turret though ah turret index boy type i think it calls type dot ah even better that tree type dot turret and type dot all dot includes e dot type this dot quad tree dot insert e uh, yeah oh e dot id and then we probably wanted to do here just warning our future selves that if anything can get built dynamically over the course of the game, it's going to get inserted multiple times during mm -hmm. uh, reconciliation unless we fix it somehow. Which means that the, the quad tree needs to be a little bit more content aware. Maybe it needs to have in the sense of an ID on everything. So you can ask it really quickly. Do you have this thing in there already? If, if you do, don't add it or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, during a prediction phase, or you could run a query before every insert, and then see if you found the same ID in there. And... If it had the ID, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that'd be a little bit slower, but mm -hmm. it's... it'd be cleaner. It'd be cleaner, but yeah, it's also like, uh, yeah, uh, there's there's a. It's not super clear to me. I wonder. I wonder what the cost of removal will be because I kind of would want to model that someday. It might be cheap. Um, removal is at worst the cost of a query, right? Right. Because you can query the same. If you know the entity ahead of time, you can basically make a, a query box for it and then tell it to. Well, removal is. Cheap. It's it's a cost of query and then like a coalesce. But that might not be so bad either. I, I bet we can figure it out. That might actually be the. I think we need a this. notion. I think the quad tree needs to be ID aware. It needs to have some notion of IDs if you're going to remove. Otherwise, okay. it doesn't know what to read, right? Because you could have multiple things at the same position. Mm, that's a good point. Yep. And I was trying to avoid adding ID awareness to the quad tree, but it sounds like we need to. Maybe there's another comparator that we could. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> Because then it would have to iterate linearly over everything. Right. E, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. We'll, we'll get her. Simple quadris today. There are ways to have data structures where... I, I think it's a little bit like the... Um, you know how in, in Ruby, the hashes have... The key value hashes have... like they preserve iteration order of like when you when you define things mm -hmm. that means they have to have an array internally right and they need to be able to remove from that array when you invalidate one of the keys in the hash so that operation needs to be fast so it's kind of one of those like it's a similar kind of thing where like you need one internal data structure that gives you fast performance on one operation iteration and you need another operator that gives you fast performance on some kind of other kind of like thing that you're trying to, which is like key value lookup, right? Um, and, but then you need mutation to be able to deal with both of those internal data structures adequately, right? Mm, yeah. Oh, it didn't break yet. No. Um, so we've got a quad tree. We got a quad tree. It might it might even work. Yeah. Uh, pretty pretty confident in that though. Yeah. Oh well, maybe not this part. It probably doesn't insert anything. Uh, you're right. It's not going to insert. Yeah. Uh, no, it'll insert whatever overlaps with the uh, origin. It'll. It will get the very top 
top left corner. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, well, this is a bummer. So because we instantiate the entity manager up front. Yeah. Either we don't create. Well, we have to tell the entity manager what the dimensions are somehow. Right? There's no mm-hmm. way around that. We, we do it again here, though. Um, Should register be on the game or? Well, I was going to say, actually, we, reach, we, we make this up front. We immediately destroy it when we start the map, though, because we. Yeah. So we could do an, a register hook on the entity manager, and that way we could leave the quad tree the game. I don't know what's preferable. Honestly, the quad tree kind of you kind of want the quad tree on the entity manager, right? I think I think it's good in here. Uh, I was gonna say maybe we just stick an ABB on the constructor and we pass in this dummy value and in the start. But like when we start the okay, map, we yeah, actually we, we very that's we great. can get the the size really easily. Yeah. yeah. It's D manager, and then this is playfield A A B B. Yeah. You become cool. That's good. And then, oh, come on. <laughs> That's annoying. What? Oh, that init map takes the constructed entity manager. Well, it's got to put the entities in there. Um, well, why don't we? Why don't we? We we want to break this apart then. Maybe a yeah. map needs to take a map. Take a map, yeah, I think so. Because we'll have origin and dimensions, yeah. Exactly. Which actually, for our cases, will be. Uh, that's always like the correct ABB for the map, right? Yep. And do we Absolutely. only call init map here? Is that the, is the only place where? It's... Uh, no, uh, server server as well, which is fine. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just repeat the same code. We'll do the same thing. Yep. yep. And the entity manager needs the same stuff added to it. So. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see. Instead of a level, we are taking uh, a map. I kind of like you as Space Dom with the space background. Space Dom? That looks cool. That looks cool. Um, I'm taking it. The space background is pretty good. I, I might need like something a little, a little more galaxy space, but um, I'm with it. Okay. You want like Eagle Nebula Dom? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, right, this is this is map raw. What is this return? Uh. It returns a map. It's and just we, MAP. Oh. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, so yeah, we... This is That's funny. Gotcha. It also returns the terrain layer, but we don't use that? Oh, I see. Yeah, I think it just returns the... Like, init map returns the map, but... See, that's a smell right there. And you return multiple objects yeah. like that. Yeah, this is better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then this can be this dot map, and then we'll take this dot current level and this dot map as the new. Yeah. Oh, ga- game progression probably needs to. I see. Okay, I'll import that. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, technically that doesn't even need to be a map itself. That's probably its own concept of like game progression is not a map concept. It's yeah, totally. Yeah, it's its own thing. And this is map.origin and map.dimensions. Uh, it's origin plus dimensions, the second one. Because the ABB is extrema. It is not, isn't, it's not offset in dimensions. It is the ex- northwest and southeast extrema of the map. So we need but, to the, come... but the map origin is zero, zero, right? So, like, dimensions is the... For the, for the map, this always works out, doesn't it? Uh, I don't think the map origin is always zero zero. Oh. Zero zero is where the is the very center of the map. Fair enough. 
Um, oh, and, yeah, that's, oh, wait, that's totally and, and this is tile origin and tile dimension. So we need to actually convert this into world space. Does that makes sense. Mm, yep. Okay, cool. I, we will sort that out then. Okay. Um, but I want to get the right thing in here. Do that and you return a terrain dot layer. Sorry, I need, to, I need something to stop being squiggly red at me. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense though. Oh, yeah, I did mean this done up. Okay, yeah, so that's still super wrong, but this looks good. So when we init, or when we load our map, what is getting set here? Tile coordinate of the north west tile. So this is still zero, zero. <laughs> but dimensions need to be multiplied by tile size. Is that right? Um, I, wonder if, I wonder if this comment is actually stale. No, this is right. So the origin okay. is, it's not zero, zero. It's going to be some negative value. Right. And then, oh, so... tile coordinate. OK, yep. Gotcha. So right, Need, needs to go to world space. Um, picking up where you're putting down. Okay, so I think the conversion to world space is just multiplying it by. This is going to be wrong because this is going to give you a position that's at the center of the tile rather than the corner. And mm. for the for the quadri, we want corners, right? Um, right. So I think we just scale it by the tile size. Okay. Great. Where it is? Cool. A two dot scale. Nice. And then whatever 144, line 144 is actually with a value of line 43 as a vector plus what you just mm. typed in for 144. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can store 140, 143 into a temporary. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, const like origin. world origin. Something like, yeah, origin's fine. Yeah, world, world origin is good, because the last one was not clear about tiles. And then oops. And yeah, I actually might just do to create. A little gross, but yeah. I mean, it's just there's no operator overloading. This would look fine if we could just express it with regular math, but uh, mm -hmm. there aren't that many languages that allow you do that. So this, what is it asking for? Just formatting? Uh, yeah, great. Okay. All right, uh, let's see, this is looking better. I think basically this exact thing needs to go into server. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where all of this is suddenly extremely upset. Um, oh, what did I forget? The very, very last line. Uh, and then the temporary terrain layer doesn't need to be there anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Let's see. Game progression. Cool. I love when it formats itself. Yeah, it's, it's great. When it works. We're doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um... Blame Don McDegrotti. I like that. Isn't it? Yeah, it's it really keeps me. That's humble that's our day. that's the title of session forty three. Oh no! <laughs> I, I uh, blame Jeff that. Lee. Blame blame to go around is what I'm hearing. Blame um, is a poorly named tool. It could be like attribution or something. 
credit, right? I know. <laughs> wow, those are the only four enemy managers to recreate in the game. So, cool. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to refresh the game. Yeah. It built. Hey, there we go. Maximum call stack size exceeded. We're doing it. Yeah. Um, Interesting. So is this the quad tree? I, I bet so, because it's item.push. Server.js item.push, 2302. Oh, this is just like, it, we don't have source maps on this, on the server side. Oh, yeah, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I tried fixing that for about 10 minutes, and then I was like, ugh. Yeah, not worth it. We can open server.js. I think it's available to you if you want to check it out. As I say, did the source maps end up over here? Unfortunately not. No. Um, oh, like this actual file? Yeah. Uh, I feel like items.push, I know exactly where it is, though. Yeah. Because it's here. Uh, so let's see. In our entity manager, maybe, uh, maybe it's time just to put a little login and see what we're doing. Yeah. Oops. I think we also have... Is it possible for us to do debugging? I know we did debugging in the browser, but cool if we could do debugging on the server as well. Yeah, I honestly don't know. Um, we'd have to execute it from VS Code, I think. Mm -hmm. Let's just see. Ah, but this is kind of what I wanted to see. Okay. So. Well, I'm not sure actually. It's just going very, very deep. Our well, quad tree is negative. That looks right enough. Yeah, the quad tree is not getting any smaller, right? Um, oh, wait, that's it. just the quad tree. Yeah, it's that's it's fine. the root. That's yeah. Fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're not. This didn't log anything about the depth, though. We certainly could. I wonder if. Yeah. Sorry, you're, you're suggesting was debugging. That's a good one. Let's see if we can. Uh, command shift D. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then it's not just, okay, so we don't have a launch configuration. We this, do here. This is. Uh, is this the default? That's the default. Yeah, because we're, we're running parcel to do the build. Mm -hmm. I think it might work. If we just did TS node, although I don't know how long that would take to launch, probably a long time, but because mm. it would have to recompile, I don't know where the cache for that lives. Um, I think that TS node knows how to deal with JSON files. Is that correct? When you import a JSON, I believe we have something in our TS config that knows how to deal with that. I think so. Because we're we're importing JSON right now. Um, that's actually the peril of using Parcel. Is that like you basically can write code that's not valid in anywhere except in Parcel's own funky yeah. universe. Yeah. It drives me crazy. <laughs> well, um, it's, it's meant as a front-end tool, right? And we did debugging uh, on the front-end. We have source maps and stuff like that on the front-end, which is nice. Uh, but unfortunately, the server is running uh, on the command line. Yeah, but is this, as, is this any more challenging than doing server TypeScript? Is there a type TypeScript? I don't know. What is type? Uh, it is it is a magic value that VS could. Mm, oh. Great. Uh, okay, we'll need a which TSC and PX bin. I think TSC. we need TS node, right? Ah. TS hyphen node. Um, oh, is it npm bin TS node? That's probably what it was. Yeah. Great. That's actually not that helpful. I thought there was a command to get the actual. Yeah, I mean, normally I just run npx. I, I was having issues running npx last time because for some reason VS Code wasn't picking up my node binary, but you might be able to do it here. What's the, what is the value of program? Oh, you're right. It's a JavaScript file. 
Um, yeah. So maybe it's not no type node. Maybe it was wrong. Let me see. Uh, uh, VS Code debug okay. TypeScript. Let's look this up. TypeScript debugging with Visual Studio Code. Nice. Oh, it just kind of knows how to do it. Uh, there's a pre-launch task. Uh, scroll okay. down. You're you're on the exact same page as I am, so I'll, I'll let you go for it. Pre-launch task, TSC build. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's it. And then out files. You need to tell it where to compile. And the out files, I think, ha have to be a different directory than out, because out is what our parcel build. Mm-hmm. Great. A debug. Uh, pretty much. Oh, okay, cool. And then our program is. Uh, uh, I think it's just the current file, right? Uh, let's if you scroll up a little bit, uh, in the in the JSON file. I'm sorry. Ah. Uh. Oh, you know, I'm thinking of what I wrote in the. Uh, program should just be current file, whatever the the placeholder, um, workspace file. I, I, I don't know what it's called. What yes, if you code config? Um, what if you got? Yeah, got rid of program. Well, we need program. File. Oh, that's fine. The file is relative to the pro. Uh, actually, actually, this. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, well, I bet see this will do it. Yeah, just open server main. Server main. Yeah. And then. And oh wait, I should make sure that's actually the. Oh, Let's yeah, give okay. it a name. Yep. Debug current file. Yeah. And let's also set a breakpoint. I was kind of curious if it would just run, but okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's get there too. Um, we'll we'll do it in Quadri. We'll we'll break it in insert because that's going to be very interesting. I was actually error exists. Oh fuck me! It doesn't know what to do. Um. Well, I'm able to open serve ts. Uh, huh. I. Hmm. Uh, it's looking at all these files that it doesn't need to worry about. Um, oh, is it TS? It's doing everything. These are broken. Uh, <coughs> why doesn't um, Arsenal care about these? We could They're add not a. Imported. What's that? They're not imported. Oh, is it? But they're not imported. Is, I mean, Parcel is running on the server. Yeah. yeah, why does TSC care? Um, and we go to the I, launch Oh, that. no. Oh, I compiled everything. Oh, hang on. <laughs> oh. uh, Jeff, this is OK. We, uh, we can do a git. Is there a git clean that only deletes files? I don't know. I'm going to add these. <laughs> oh, wait. git add star.ts? Oh. Uh, star star slash star dot ts. Hey, yeah, now we're yeah. talking. Uh, great. We don't want it. I would actually just commit to a branch or something like that. Right yeah, now. yeah, we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do that because I don't want to lose this code. Uh, whip. And then. Git space clean space hyphen f. Clean df. Yeah. Oh. Whew. Okay. That was a close one. How? How do I prevent that from happening? It seems like out files didn't do the right thing. Did um, not. Yeah. What does ts config json say? It contradicting this. Uh, it looks pretty good. I don't know, man. I might as well put this in here while we're yeah, doing Yeah, I this. added that exclude because I didn't know what it was for. 
<laughs> fair, like that? fair enough. <laughs> I just yeah. added it. Um, That's good. Uh, well, let me. I'm gonna run this again. Yeah. Let's just see what we get, and now we can sort of safely. We need an open server main, I think. Ah, of course. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. It's almost as if it's missing a filter. Mm hmm. What is it? So it's the command. It's running TSC. Um, this is just not the right command because it's running TSC on everything. Oh, it's our, it's the pre-filter. The pre-filter is the problem. Yeah, that is doing a lot of stuff. Um, out files. You've likely not set source map true. Out files looks correct. Uh huh. I don't know why it's dumping the JS file. Could be older version of TypeScript that the instructions are in, but what yeah. the hell even is this format for the launch task or the pre-launch task? Dude, I don't know. I really so tsconfig does want an outdoor for for one thing. Okay. Yeah, but they they just kind of like elided this very important part of it. I guess they didn't leave it out. They just put it in a funny spot. Okay. And parcel will know not to use that. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're not running parcel, are we? Uh, we do run parcel when we run yarn dev. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Staged. Oh, but we're not running Yarn Dev. Oh, you're worried about TS config. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am. I am also worried about TS config now. Yeah. Let's see what we get. We can we can write our own TS config for this strange case, yeah. and that'll that'll be okay. Okay, now it's unhappy, but at least writing to the right place. And that makes sense because this is. This is building everything. Like, what in God's name is TSC colon build? Like, what the hell is that? Like, what? I don't know. What syntax is that? It's kind of pre-launch task. Oh man, this is this is some specific shit. Oh, this is this is actually like a very specific. You can build or watch in VS Code. Oh, so this is like extra value add stuff that we don't need, right? I think I think what we're running is this. What is hyphen p? I don't know. I don't have it. Should I have it? No, no. I mean, that's what came out in the terminal. Oh, yeah. Good point. I, I bet we could just copy this. Um, I think uh, TSC is like dash project. I mean, we're, we're going to lose the debugger though, right? Or are you saying we just don't need to pre-launch? Well, right the pre-launch task, all it's doing is generating the fi files and the out files, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and have they been generated? Um, I, I, I guess I so. And the other confusing thing is um, maybe the program that we're trying to run. Oh, you do point it to the TypeScript file. Like, how does the ts? How does the launch.json know how to correlate the ts mm. file that you specify on line twenty-three to the stuff that is actually running at the runtime, which is in line one twenty-six? Do you know what I'm saying? I man, I am way outside my knowledge boundary on this VS Code stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not that I, it's hard. It's just very specific no, it, and finicky, right? It's it's obtuse, yeah. yeah. 
Um, I, I'm going to leave this in, and I think actually I'm gonna, we can leave this in too. Outdoor is not going to, it should not affect our TS anything. Yeah. So we, we can keep this around and see if we like it. Ooh. <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a real Thursday kind of day. I, I learned that I'm really maxing out on my PTO, so I just took tomorrow off. Oh, man, you are so good at, like, four-day weeks. I'm so jealous. I mean, my, my manager told me that. He was a uh, shout-out to my manager, who might be watching <laughs> the stream right now. But, uh, no, he was great. He was like, uh, by the way, you might want to consider taking some time off. You're about to max out. And I'm like, damn it. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to confirm that, like, all this shit still ran. Yeah, okay. Cool. So these these changes are fine. Uh I move. I move to continue the VS Code debugging later. Okay, because it's a little bit. Uh, yeah, it, I, we're, it's kind of. I, like I really black feel hole. a yeah. yeah. I don't feel a path forward that I have a, a clear win on. Yeah. But let's let's dig into the quad tree. Yeah. Um, and I think specifically node. Inserts. Maybe what we can do on the inserts is we can console log. Mm -hmm. Do the ABB. The ABB. We can do the item. And the item. Really, it's just going to be a entity. Yeah, but what we want to see is the ABB is getting smaller, right? Mm -hmm. And and the way we can do that is here we can say splitting node. And can we also print the ABB here as well? Yeah, splitting node, um, ABB. Yeah, and we're not going to print the quadrants. Yeah, that's so. What I imagine happening is like, I think what you're talking about, like infinite splitting, because we don't have a minimum split size. But also, the same entity should not be going into the same. Like, there should be one entity per. Yeah, exactly. Unless there's some weird thing with the overlap, because we are in a situation where we have grid aligned uh, regions. Well, and like there, there's nothing where there should be four of these. And even if it splits to five because of bad math, like it's still not infinite. It should just split into an awkward ABB, I think. Yeah. Okay, this was interesting. Uh... So every split should be preceded by an insert, right? Are they, is that true? Yes, that is correct. But there's a lot of inserts. Yeah, and how do we know whether the ABB is getting smaller? Mm -hmm. Is it? Mm -hmm. It looks pretty constant, right? Is this the ABB that we're splitting or the one we're inserting? It's a split because we only have entity T. So, string it and we don't have a pause. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like it it looks like it splits forever after it inserts a couple items. So that's cool. Um So it's so, uh let's see. We do when when we split, we node insert the ABB. Oh, um I see. I see the infinite loop, Jeff. It exists. Oh, we're not making. Uh, it say again. I, I was gonna say I was thinking that we were somehow tripping over this, but we should be handing back a node with children. I wonder if node itself here is a problem. Um. Um. Inserting items into child nodes. Well, no, I mean, I, 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 I don't think it's a. I guess I'm wondering if it's like a strange object thing where, in fact, children isn't just ending up in the right place. Uh, wow, that's weird. That code looked good to me, actually. OK, yeah, I, I think it does. Ah, okay. Well, here's the top of it. So insert, insert, insert. 
split. Insert into children. So this is zero. And this looks like the top quadrant to me. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, actually, this looks fine. Yep. Dang. All right. Do we know which thing is getting infinite? Like, is it like an an object? Is it like an entity on the edge? Mm -hmm. Wait, what was the error actually down there? It's maximum, maximum cost, cost that exceeded. This is a little funky, right? Um, it's wild to me too. Like we're we're hitting a bunch of. It's like inserting. It's inserting a bunch. I'm not seeing these get too much smaller. Yeah, this seems wrong, right? Can we also print when we get to a new entity? Yeah, yeah, totally. That would, like in the entity manager insert. Yeah. I want to. I want to prove to us our, myself that like. Um, mm -hmm. Print. Um, new entity. Yeah, and then e.id maybe. Uh huh. Oh, your debugging instincts are so good. That was perfect. All caps. You needed to make it really obvious. That was good. Mm -hmm. It's not my first time at the rodeo. Oh, okay. So it makes it it makes it sixty three D, which I'm gonna try not to believe is like an awkwardly perfect number to break on. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But it is an awkwardly perfect number to break on. It is. Um and, and these do these are slightly smaller. Hang on a sec. Uh, by the way, uh can we also print out the entities? The, the the region the, the entities A V B that we're inserting that oh yeah that's a that's a great idea um I'll have to copy that out of the comparator function um yep. yeah let's just... yeah and I'm gonna get uh let's see let's dot log yeah pile box and we're gonna do like yeah this dot entities <clears throat> Oh, actually, wait, we have E, don't we? Yeah. I deleted the thing I actually wanted, which was tile box. Yeah, you think it's possible? Are we trying to insert something that doesn't exist in the ABB so it just goes forever? Maybe, maybe tile box. Well, our comparator should reject. The comparator. Hmm. Now we got to 148, which is that is interesting. That entity is these are these are okay. Yeah, they're 24 yeah, by 24, right? That's that's yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what's what's strange is that we are. Oh my god! Stop it! We're inserting a lot of entities in a row into this first box or the second box. And it should be recursing, right? It certainly shouldn't have, shouldn't have done this many in a row. Yeah. Ah, they're slightly, they're slightly different, but these are still like the root boxes. Um, yeah. By is... the time we have this many, we should have, we should be pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Item. Let's see, inserting that. We um, could pass a depth indicator just for debugging purposes. Mm -hmm. Oh, no dot items dot length. Um, yep, yep, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. Um, and then item is item. 
I, I'm just curious, sort of, I have a sense that items just is getting out of control. Uh, you know, items question mark dot length because it mm -hmm. might not. Be, yeah. If it's null, we know it's an intermediate. Mm -hmm. It made it to four. It's weird oh. how this is non determined. Oh. Uh, no, I crashed it. Shit, I thought question mark was supposed to do the thing. Oh, it's saving again. Okay. Uh, current items undefined. Current item zero. This is getting inserted a lot, though. Oh, yeah, uh, the, this is just way too many times where it goes current items undefined one, undefined two. Is, is the first corner the same as well? The first corner. Oh, also, this is just a concerning number, but it's a float. Yeah, but these are all, I guess they're not powers of two. That that may be a problem for. Mm -hmm. It's all roughly negative four hundred fifty six and then negative forty eight, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We so why does that keep coming up? Um, quadrant of A B B. Can we also print? No, never. Okay. Don't, well, no, don't... no. Actually, uh, can I see the call stack again? Can I, can I see the output again? Yeah. Um, this is the same entity over and over and over again, right? Because we didn't see new entity. Right? Yeah, where'd that go? Oh, I mean, is this is this the result of splitting? Yeah, I don't see That's... new entity. That's a great point. It stopped at some point. Where's my last new entity? Uh, is it helps. just that your your uh, terminal d has a limited buffer? Yeah, can I turn that up in iTerm? Yes, you can. Hell yeah, of course I can. Uh, well, you just click around. I, I just don't think it's called buffer. Totally. Like scroll back or something. Mm -hmm. Scroll back lines. A thousand. Come Unlimited. now. Unlimited, yeah. That's what I'm talking about what is this quad core for if not to make it chug on infinite scroll back it can handle it it's got it ah i feel like we're so close gosh all right well that's just inexplicable um but let's see that call stack is not that deep it's really not Ah, um, let's see. So here we go. We're inserting 63. Yeah. So nothing, nothing for this splits. Are we splitting too often? How? What happens when we split? We split here. All this shit makes sense to me. Damn. Yeah. How we, uh, let's see, the other thing, I guess. Well, we are reinserting. This is the new de development that we added in here, which is why. The sucker? That's still pass, right? Yeah, we we're reinserting into itself. I think that should be fine. Really should be fun. None of the test pass? Oh, God, it's running against out debug. Never mind. Just is. Yeah. Let's just do that again without those pesky extra files. Wait, how did it know to look at out debug? Uh, I think TypeScript knows about it now. Oh, that's annoying. So if yeah. you get rid of that, does it just this? 
I, I mean, it's it's fine. It was just I think also I was just running npx jest, which looks for every file in the directory name uh-huh. test. So, um, wow, it's really unhappy about this. That's too bad. Helpers. I'm not convinced that it knows what to do. Um, I'm going to undo this TS config change. I don't like it. This didn't save. It never saves. But our test passed after making these changes. I think we're fine. Gosh, this whole transpile thing. I know. It's a disaster, isn't it? I know, it really is. It really, really is. Well, that's cool. Oh, hey, it's logging now. That's great. Um, but we know, we know all this works. Oh. Well, this is also much more simplistic. The examples in the test might not be comprehensive. But clearly they aren't because something's failing. Exactly. What else can we do? Um... <laughs> can we can we maybe capture that that output when it fails? Get in buffer. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a nice meaty one. Just save this to desktop. Quadrate uh, fail log. Mm-hmm. All right, can you scroll down? I want to see this call yeah. stack of the exception. Oops. I mean, I. It looks like it's failing at the formatting, right? I, I think actually what's happening is it's throwing an exception and trying to print the node, but the node is too deep. Is that what's going on? It should know not to traverse that deep. Because it's failing on a call to console log. It's failing on a... Interesting. Like, if you look at 1476... Oh. Can you actually open out server.js yeah yeah let's do it. and then go to line 2320 20. oops not that though you're going to open an xcode i know it adam yeah nobody asked for that Go to line, oh, thank goodness, three, two, five. So it's having a hard time with this. Ah, is the node too deep? Yeah. The, the node can be very complex, okay. But I thought console log knows not to, not to recurse. The only way that it, and it even has like cyclical object detection, doesn't it? I felt like. I, I thought so, but let's. If that is if that is really what is upsetting this thing, um, let's let's just do that. Okay. Splitting, and we'll log i, which is our string. I uh, is not the string. Oh, it is Items? the string. It is the string yeah. that we're reinserting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no objects in this log. Same. So let's get this going again. And that was line two two nine five. Yeah, if you do command T colon, that that could see that, and then type in the number. Yeah. Oh come on, that's great. Uh, so this is the big one. Um, Uh, that all looks fine. Why yeah. is that having a hard time? 
item should be a string node dot items. There's no infinite recursion there. Mm -mm. And A B B is just two numbers, four numbers. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, like, call stack size exceeded, I feel like, is, it's, it's really just, it, that's weird that it happens to be right here. Can we, um, uh, okay, so maybe let's just start passing the depth into node insert, and then just okay. printing that. That sounds good. Uh, cool. I'll do depth number. And then we'll do depth plus one. And this should just be depth. That is, yeah, that is normal depth. And the quad tree needs well. Mm -hmm. And maybe um, all the tests, or we could default it to equal zero if we believe that we've. Uh, yeah, I was. Gonna, I feel I was maybe just gonna put a default here. Also, we might not keep this around. So, yep. um, if not, depth. Oh, you can just do equal zero in the, in the signature. Right? Oh, can I? Even with the type signature there, great. So I can. I forgot that that worked. You can do it. Come on. We are not that deep. No. So depth two and depth three have the exact same bounding box. Has, has, oh, sorry. No, it's no, different don't. over here. Yeah, yeah, never mind. They have the same bottom right, but they've, OK. Did you just paste? Is that why there's stuff coming? bottom nope it's just like the last buffer coming in oh weird yeah oh it's like didn't flush correctly or something mm -hmm. so, yeah so how do we go from okay so sh every every step down actually should have one of the points of the abb be the same as the previous one no it it could be middle yeah okay no never mind Interesting. How big a box is this? Five seventy six minus four eighty is ninety six. This is this is a very strangely shaped box, right? This is ninety six across and seven ninety six plus seven sixty eight. Yeah, that. This, this should be a square. OK. Let's look at our quadrant function. Quadrant of AB. Yeah. Oh, lordy. Yeah, well, this old chestnut. We tested this, didn't we? Uh, we did. If we didn't test this specific. No, it's the very first test we wrote. Oh, we totally did test it. Um, fuck, OK. Let's write a bigger test. Like from negative 10, negative 10 to 10, 10. Okay, so northwest is negative 10. Oh, God, I feel like we just did this last stream. <laughs> and the bottom right is 0, 0, which should be the center. Northeast is negative 10. Sorry, this is 0, negative 10. Because it's straight up, and this goes to 10, 0. Southeast goes from 0, 0 to 10, 10. And southwest goes from negative 10, 0 to 0, 10. 
don't know why it's any different this time around, but um, let's do it. Uh, source util quad tree helpers test. Yeah. We can do that from VS Code as well. There's a launch.json that'll run. Ah, oh, shit. I can't remember that. Although I think I might have hard coded my paths in there because. Wait, what the hell? It... It's really unhappy about this. I'm just going to comment it out for now. I don't, I don't know why that's an unexpected character in this particular environment. Somehow I have made our texture environment like significantly worse tonight. Maybe Parcel knows what the question mark is, but yes, whatever. Uh. Uh, unfortunately, it worked. OK. Um, can we see the debug output again? Uh, this? No, the console log that we. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. That's failing. Is it, is it always failing on this one? I mean, it should be deterministic. Mm. Right? It's always failing around here. I wonder why it'd be different. It's not if the call stack size is ever. Um, and so we were saying there was there was a box there was one of these that looked. Um. Yeah. Like this. This is ninety six wide, but ninety six plus seven sixty eight tall. Yeah. Doesn't it look like? Looks like seven sixty eight is in fact stuck. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is this a copy problem? Well, our quadrant of AABB is creating new arrays every single time, right? Oh, um, that's a good question. Not here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not, um, oh wait, no, not here. That's where 768 are coming from. Ah, uh, Jeff. Um. Is that it? <laughs> Did we? And then we're missing one, I think. I um, I, I thought we, we only used the exact. We only used the exact vec two twice for these two points, which. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> the okay. other thing we could do is we could clone a bb at the top. We'd all you uh... know what. But it's constant. I don't want to deal with the, the TypeScript shit. I think I think it's fine what we're doing. Okay. Well, let's run it again. Oh shit, that was very different. Oh, you know why? Because I took out a bunch of stuff. Seems similar though. Um... Oops. But actually, it's sort of it got to new entity, new entity, new entity, new entity. Did we just forget a clone somewhere? I, we might have done that again. Yeah. It's weird that it gets this far down, doesn't split anymore. Yeah. And this whole thing they... makes me want to rewrite this in C or Rust because <laughs> there's no there's no confusion between references and. Like we want to treat vectors like plain old data that just copy every time you pass it into a function. Yep, 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 yep. I'm with you. Yeah, it looks like we've got the same problem here, right? Still happening, and I feel pretty confident that that is something going wrong for us. Um, let's. I mean, do we do anything else? No, we return. This is value based. The only time we modify anything is when we divide by two, right? This it's, is it, right? It's, it's in this, yeah. Um, and this is a number. That's totally fine. I'm tempted to clone the AABB. OK, I think you need to rename the variable then. Ah, that's probably true. And you need to clone. Um, you need, it I needs need to, to clone to individually, a, yeah. yeah. Um, OK. Although I, I don't see where the bug is, though. I, I know, but we're gonna we're gonna do this. I 
I also do not see how this is the bug, so yep. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, underscore eight. Oh, thank you. Yep. Maybe the there's this the slow compile. There you go. What's that? Is it maybe it's just a slow <laughs> compile? Oh, why it wasn't updating or? Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're. Why, well, why the clones didn't work? Because the clones seem like they should have worked. Oh, I see. I mean, this this has recompiled. Yeah. How? We're only at depth seven, and we're still really stuck on this 768Y coordinate. That's weird. Wait, uh, is this the value we're inserting? Is that the problem? Um, oh, so we're just misinterpreting this, right? What you're saying? Um, no, because this is what we're doing, and this is definitely no. This is the ABB. We check. We check our quadrants. Can we update the debug text so we're really? We're, 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 that's yeah. Confusing. Uh, also, we're we're ten after, so I think we might just want to put a pin in this here and. Okay. This is gonna be a very man. This is like the most frustrating thing to leave on, but I don't even feel like we're necessarily close to our resolution. Uh, okay, got it. So inserting a a b b of what? No, we're we're inserting into a node uh, that has this a b a b. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number items. ID depth. Yeah. Yeah, that number should definitely be getting smaller. It should be getting smaller. Yeah, and I I actually thought the last instance of this is pretty instructive. Um, and we are recompiling the code because this this got updated. Because that was that's that was the other thing I was thinking. I was like, we are. There you go. Nope. No, it's it's happening. Um. Hmm. It's funny. This is not that deep. And it's, it's really it's really not. Yeah. But this uh, this is the wrong shape of box again. It keep it keeps happening. So that's annoying. Okay. Yep. 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 Um, yeah. Check out. Quad trees part two. Still quadin. We're gonna figure it out like ten minutes after the stream is. I know, I know. I'm I'm gonna be done looking at computers tonight, so I'm a, I'm afraid that your curiosity will be going, but I actually want to look at this tomorrow. Okay, that's that's totally fine. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'll I'll uh I'll probably just go and play Hades now or Remnant if you want to play Remnant. <laughs> oh wait, you can't. Uh, no. you're, you're. I'm a, I'm not I'm not not at my PC tonight, but okay. uh yeah. You you should you should play some Hades. Yeah. It's. Okay. Mm, it's perfect. Well, forward. Jeff, I'm sorry that was so unsatisfying. No, it's fine. Um, <laughs> it's so close. I feel like... I'm not going to blame the language. I was about to blame the language. Uh, well, we are we to. are running into debugging issues because of the language. But I'll tell you what, if this was Rust... We would have fixed it. We wouldn't. No, no, we wouldn't have been able to like even get the debugger working at all. Like It's horrible. You'd have to use LLDB, <laughs> which is just like the worst. Fair enough, but it wouldn't let us write the bugs in the first place. Uh, it's pretty good at no, that. It's, it makes it really hard to write code in the first place. But uh, a lot of this, like, kind of like, are we copying or are we passing our reference code? Really clear, because again, Boy. that's what that's what like a memory, like, like a like a C or a Rust, a non garbage collected language makes you makes you specify like really really. Mm. Dang. Well. I look forward to being smacked in the face with the answer to this very shortly. Yes. Uh, and, you know, we'll have a week to work. Um, are you bringing your computer to the desert, or are you going to try not to do that? Oh, I'm going to bring my computer. Yeah, I'll have plenty of time to kill.
All right. Just not enough internet to uh, promise a stream. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Okie doke. Well, uh, I guess we'll see everybody on stream in not Monday, but the next Monday after that. Yeah, what day is that? That is going to be the 19th. Fantastic. All right. Well, happy quad tree and everybody. Happy go eat quad tree. Some, go eat some nugs. This stream brought to you by nugs, literally, because I had like eight nugs the other day. Uber Nostrum. You know, it's actually brought brought to you by 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 Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. That the, oh, that's why you eat man. nugs is to eat the barbecue sauce. Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get me some nugs. I look forward to it. Also, hash browns with the barbecue. Oh, sauce. I love Trader Joe's hash browns. Those oh, really they're nice. so good, right? That's they're what this stream is brought to you by. Is just like the friggin' Trader Joe's hash browns. They're exactly like McDonald's hash browns. They probably come to the <laughs> same factory. I hope so. Joe Joe did a great job trading for those. If he yeah, did, it's incredible. And with that, right. we'll see you, Twitch.